I did run across some shagging hyenas at one point, but that was… That oh, was, wow. You recorded the video? Uh, no, I was scared for my life, frankly. I was in recognition. Yeah. Why? 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 Literally, Team Mafisi. <laughs> team Mafisi. <laughs> are you good personally with money or are you chaxing? Um, on a personal uh, level. I need to take some classes from you. <laughs> from me? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even answered. And he's like, I'm going to take like, Oh, listen, it's, 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 it's my team that keeps me in check. <laughs> Yeah, but I can Keeps me in check. <laughs> in check. In check. In check. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, check yourself yeah. before you wreck yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm check. If you had access to all the artists over here are afraid to be controversial, which mm. controversy is the main feeding mechanism. It's the it's fuel so, to the yeah. fire. It so is. that people... It doesn't have to be blatant and obvious. Yeah. Like it, I, I shouldn't but it has to be ratchet. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but, that's it. but also, headlines sell, bro. Yeah. So it has to be... That's a headline. Sell. I was always telling the guys, bro, if you guys are going to be quiet for the next, like, two, three more weeks, I'm going to plant mm. a bag of weed in Shimano's car. <laughs> <laughs> myself. Um, the guys... breaking up. I mean, let's be honest. You know, I don't think that's ever going to happen. You know, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. They're homies, man. They're, they're, homies. they're homies. But they need to yeah. focus on their solo careers and, yeah. you know, you know, retiring and come back out of retirement is one of yeah. the oldest yeah. tricks in the books, yeah. too. You know? And when you announce it eight months ahead with plenty of shows yeah. and touring, <laughs> like, guys, we're going to break up uh, in eight months. But before then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so then, yeah. Canada tour, US tour, but Europe tour, but Europe tour <laughs> Australia, come and see but us, appreciate <laughs> us. <laughs> But let's be honest. Over 26. This is the Brunch Club. Over 26. Welcome back to the Brunch Club. The mics are cool. Now, when you watch it, you'll understand. What up, my name is Chaxi, the mastermind, your main guy, the Lord Chaxi. <laughs> the beautiful Mariah is around, the amazing Moss is around. The whole gang is around episode 94. We are my check. <laughs> and it goes without saying, Monarch is in the building. <laughs> this is the only one with this energy, right? Yeah. I can't keep doing this. Press it. Could you try the Just, same? Mm-hmm. Try the same. Ooh. Try. You want to launch the episode? <laughs> 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 Should we have a disclaimer for by my soul, not being a big in my soul I'm shouting, guys. No, you yeah, be, I'm shouting. Man. You should be more specific with the genie. When you say, like, I want to wake up Sunday, so. <laughs> <laughs> you should say, where? <laughs> I missed the first part. Hi, man. Good. Oh, sorry. She's struggling with a sore throat. Yeah. Deep throat. Yeah. Bad man. <laughs> Too much, Mariah. Regulate. <laughs> None of what we were discussing prior. Is prior is <laughs> Regulate. How are you, man? Mm. Good to see you. Finally. Uh, bro, yeah. we've been talking about doing this for months. No, it wasn't that bad. Not mm. months. It's no, you months, called me bro. live from no, one of these sessions. No. So well, you said, am I coming? I said, yeah, I'm coming. The, the last time I met you in person, okay. remember when you, when you were with Jeff Koenange? Yeah, Sam yeah, and Riverside? And then you're like, let's do it. Yeah. Then, you, then there was Rhino Charge. Are, then yeah. there was WRC. <laughs> then uh, you said you're traveling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's months. So we it's are, been yeah. months. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been months. Oh, yeah. So finally. Yeah, finally. How's everything been? Everything is good. Everything is good. Can't complain, eh? How's Kenzo? Kenzo is good. It was just yeah. his birthday last weekend. Mm-hmm. Big boy. Six. Mm-hmm. Six now? Yeah, six. Damn, bro. Six. Rio is four this weekend. Next weekend. Are you having more babies? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of December. saying like... Let's wait till December. <laughs> yeah, no, December. <laughs> December will decide. <laughs> Let's say for Christmas. It's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Christmas babies. Hey. Christmas babies. Why, why do you normally spend your Christmas? I'm just trying to figure out. Usually. Huh? <laughs> Clearly. Is he trying to really get me down there? someone. Hey, it's Sunday every day. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> jingle, jingle bells. 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 So for context, Mike's all two kids. Two yeah, yeah, two kids. All September born in September. September. September babies. You know what yeah. your parents are yeah. doing. 1st of August and uh, you know, <laughs> 9th of September. Oh. So Mike gets busy during but, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> but as you were saying, so many people do, right, friends. The you're, 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 I'm also September You're unwrapping baby. gifts, but you're not wrapping yeah. anything else. No. Frayona. <laughs> <laughs> Roll Christmas. Roll Christmas. Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. We can go on this. That's a jingle bell. This is the top of the show. Many metaphors. Keep them coming. 
<laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. Uh, oh yeah. my gosh! No. <laughs> September babies. Mm. I tweeted yesterday and I said, so if it's past six, I'll just give you hugs. Because <laughs> you guys are like fifty-two in my DMs. I saw yeah. someone's tweet saying that <laughs> September is the biggest Friday of the year. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Really? Virgos. Even my dad was born in mm. September. In September, yeah. My birthday is mm. next week Sunday. Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you guys, you guys have to do hugs. something. You're past for me, six. Bro. I don't Are care. You're past six. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do an episode for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two. Uh, uh, Virgos. So oh my God. Yeah, Virgos. They're very cautious. Eh? Mm-hmm. We are very, very cautious people. We are very mm-hmm. cautious, but also the, some of the best people you'll find. Hundred percent. No, yeah. right. Yeah. My kids are so cautious. I'm being their dad. They're like, eh? or, they're, <laughs> what? They're trying to push them into, uh, yeah, no. Virgos. Why this season? What are they cautious about? Uh, just everything, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess even the team around me is kind of cautious. I feel like I'm always jumping head first, and they're always like, "Eh," I'm like, "Guys, let's do this thing." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like we need to move his mic, bro. Yeah. Am I? Yeah, like slightly forward. Yes. No, Ernest will help you. Don't worry. So, um, so my introduction to you was definitely Saudi, right? But what is Marek up to just before mm-hmm. before Saudi Soul? Before Saudi Soul, how far before, hey? This is like 11, 12 years ago? Yeah, no, this is Saudi's 2012. So 10, 11 2012, years ago. 2012, yeah, 11 years ago. Damn. So what, 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 what is Marek up to before Saudi? Ah, it was all over the place a little bit, hey? Okay. I'm originally from Czech, um, uh, Czech Republic. After the revolution in 89, 91, a lot of things changed. We moved to South Africa. Mom was appointed ambassador. She was part of the struggle, so that was her kind of continuation in civil service and stuff. Moved to South Africa, spent eight years there. Cape Town. Oh, the nicest part. Yeah, the good one. Uh, (laughs) They call it the mother city. (laughs) Well, I spent eight years over there, then seven years in LA, then one year in New York, and then 15 years here now. Mm. Wait, so your mom was moved to Kenya as well? Yeah, she was here as well for a couple of years, yeah. Okay. Three years. So what what are you doing? What am I doing now? <clears throat> no, at this time. At uh, this I'm time, trying, yeah, like professional. Bro, just vibing. Just being loose, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much. Uh, prof- what you said, professionally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, what? Just I just moved here from LA, from New York, but mostly from LA, and it was just um, <clears throat> as a kid. I just graduated uni. Mm. I was in my early twenties uh, when I moved here. Yeah. Um, Came in with a with a with a company from California, a Cameroonian friend of mine it was a mobile tech kind of company. That's that's the space I was in is mobile tech, yeah. a little bit, and then uh, then CSR um, was never really like a business of like buying something, putting a markup on it, and selling it. That level of business not my not my vibe. I find it a little bit. I find it a little bit empty from that perspective and always needed some social element to the work that I was doing. So I guess that's why I ended up doing, I guess, what I'm doing now as well. Mm. Yeah. Then, <clears throat> so then you did seven years with Saudi. So at yeah. what point do you meet Saudi Sol? What is, like, is this, uh, do they, is Live and Die out? No, Live and Die no, is no, not no. out. Live and Die is in 2016, hey? This was four this years was, after. Uh, so the fir- when we met, the yeah. first song that we did together was Nishike. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Because I was like, Scandalous. <laughs> coming from Europe and US, you know, the boy band stuff is kind of, you know, we gotta get yeah. you guys into like yeah. either like neck tattoos and grills or like <laughs> or like <laughs> sex shirtless. icons or something like that, or shirtless, yeah. you know. Thank God you I guys said, went that's, to the, that's the decision, decision <laughs> we went in. Hey? Neck <laughs> 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 so this was, yeah. so this was discussed in a boardroom. Uh, yeah. Then I hit the gym for six months. You know, it was funny. Be- yeah, it was funny because during that year, that was the year Wrecking Ball came out with Miley Cyrus. There was a lot of nudity and like blurred lines as well. This, that's the same year. Also, Wolf of Wall Street came out that year and was banned here in Kenya, yeah. and it went on fire because it was banned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? So there was like a yeah. Two songs. Three. Three songs. What song? Nana. Oh, Nana. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's also that scene with Savare in that uh, in Nishika is very similar to oh, no, no, yeah, the, oh, yeah. the push-ups and the pull-ups yeah. kind of a thing. <laughs> so you see, all of that is happening. Yeah. So that influenced that influenced all of that because we we're like nudity is apparently happening, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
banning something apparently really works for <laughs> you know, so spreading the, the word, apparently. That was your KPI. You're um, going to get So banned. our KPI was yeah. literally like, let's put some nudity out there so it gets banned. And then they, because of Everyone's that, it's going to go on fire. It. We put it out there. It got banned and went on fire. It's the first kind of, I think, out, yeah. first song that also crossed over for Saudi outside Ooh. of Kenya. It like, went to wow. South Africa. Was it was news, yeah. It was <laughs> that is crazy because of how digital <clears throat> media changed the game. Because yeah. if you shot this yeah. and it got banned and no TV could play it before, <laughs> before social media, <laughs> then you just have a video to show your homies. <laughs> then it was just banned. But this yeah. way, people are like, yeah. Because everyone so wants to see why this video is banned. For, for for does fund work? Like, does the government mm. contact you? Uh, <laughs> or, or you just see no. it in the headlines like us. Because as we saw a newspaper You've been article, banned. We're like, <laughs> KPI. Do they give you things to do? You have to take it off YouTube. You have to do this, that. No, you can't take it off no. YouTube. Mm -hmm. No, I think they try somehow. Mm -hmm. Or... Yeah. Pull it down? To get it pulled down? Like you're flagged? I what guess happened? you can be flagged and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Especially for like public like free to air and stuff oh, like that. That's okay. definitely like flagged. Yeah. So but no one contacts you. Was there a phone call and email? Uh, no, they always put they, up a statement. They put out no? a statement. So, yeah. you, so like, you found out online the same way we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, then, okay, maybe from your own perspective, right? <clears throat> and working with Saudi from, the, from this point where maybe the music was not heavily consumed outside the borders. Mm -hmm. What do you think, you know, it takes to really get music across? Hmm. But as, I'm sure it's borders. many things, but yeah, it is many things. Just but as, I think, aside, aside having a good product, I think it has to be an authentic product that has to like build as much off of um, your uh, your own culture. You see, I, I feel like there's been some sort of a disconnect in terms of um, you know, like there's a lot of questions out there that we've always been asked when we're on tour and when we're outside, like, what's Kenya's sound? You know, like, it, the, the people seem to have a good sense of what, like, Tanzanian sound is, Congolese sound is, Nigerian sound is, South African sound. They have a good sense of it, but yeah. they're always like, what's Kenya's Kenya sound? You know, like, what's Uganda sound? What's the, the, yeah. the regional sound? And I don't know what happened at a certain point, but, like, <clears throat> you know, the uh, the culture got a little bit left behind. You yeah. know, so many people don't know them mushrooms and John Katana mm -hmm. and stuff, yeah. like... Afrobeat uh, is, is I think, successful partially because it builds off of Afrobeat and Fela Kuti and, like, mm -hmm. you know, these Nigerians, mm -hmm. they put their culture into the music videos, the poo-poos, and, all, you know, like, everything is there, their food. Their, we somehow seem to, I don't know, there, there, there's a period, I think, in the late 2000s, just overall 2000s, where there's a lot of artists that sound global level because they are, like, you know, the Karoons and, mm -hmm. you know, you start playing on a global level at this point, uh, Nikita Kering, um, you know. Um, but what I think is important for it to travel, it really needs to stand out. And when people hear on a playlist or somewhere, you know, Afrobeats or Burner, they stop. They're like, ah, this is different. You know, this is definitely the flavor from Niger. Yeah. You give it a chance to assess if you like it or not. Yeah. But um, a lot of music over here, just it, where's the... You know, where's the authentic instruments, the mm. nyatitis and, and all <coughs> Orutu and, Orutus Orutus and all yeah. that stuff, somehow modernized yeah. and vibe-wise. Yeah. I just feel like that's been lost a little bit. So, I don't know. I think it's, we're getting there. Yeah. Things are moving. And I think as well, like East Africa as a region is a, is, a, is a key element, and I think, in coming together. Because individually, the countries have not really stood up and up to the Southern African and the West African um, Standards? Not even standard, but yeah. just, you know, the level of push and the level. So I think coming together as well as East Africa yeah. is, is, is something we're working on as well. I think that's Oktoberfest yeah. EA as well. So for Ooh, and we'll get that. Actually, I feel like we skipped mm. a bit, right? So you, mm. you finished uni, just moving around, uh, fucking crazy bitches, <laughs> not really wanting to do much. Did I say that? <laughs> 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 so <laughs> then how do you end up uh, becoming uh, the manager for Saudi Soul? Because you were not managing talent mm. prior, right? No, I wasn't, no. Um, if we just ran into each other. I, mean, I was still always very keen <laughs> on going to, you know, events, festivals, yeah. and, you know, all of that kind of, uh, stuff. So I just ran into them at one of these events. I think it was at Alliance Francaise at a gig. And then we somehow met afterwards and um, there was a co whole conversation that they're going on their first tour um, I think they were going with Ninke and with, um, um, they were going for their first Dutch tour in Europe and we somehow oh. met a couple of drinks later, like, are you playing in Czech Republic? They were like, no, I was like, that's my hood, I got you. And then <laughs> the night went and it got completely <laughs> bent somewhere. And then I woke up the next day, I was like, 
That's yeah. easy. I just promised somebody that I'm going to like... <laughs> <laughs> book, get them a booking. Yeah, to add to their like, you know, European tour dates. I was like, I just don't want to be that guy. So I called yeah. a few of my friends. Do you have any contacts in the music business? They were like, what? I'm like, just give me the names, bro. They're like, I managed to actually find them within like two weeks, like three bookings at a few festivals oh, in Czech real? Republic. And I was like... In the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm imagining Maria calling you asking if you have contacts for the music business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's why people call you. Uh, yeah, no, that's 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 <laughs> changed. Now that's, that's what. Changed. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you ask me, like, I'm gonna talk to Soti, so who can I call? up? like, probably Maria. Yeah. So. Put you to, okay. So then, a few weeks later, I called Shimano because that's the number I had from that night, uh, and I was like, "By the way, remember?" And we're like, yeah. "No." I was like, "Anyway, whatever. Yeah. I've got some three bookings for European tour. Take it or leave it." Yeah. You know. And they were like, "Yeah, let's do it." Mm-hmm. Uh, we uh, we'll do it together. I was like together, and mm-hmm. I just I mean we, you've booked it. Yeah. So yeah, the next time we met was on tour in Czech Republic for oh, three wow. for three gigs, and mm-hmm. it went it went well. We had a lot of fun. So when we came back, it was like that was fun. Let's do it again next summer. At this point, I had my own company going, doing the CSR stuff. Yeah. Uh, for Nestle and a few other companies, so I was pretty busy with that. And they were like, no, actually, let's just continue doing it from this point onwards. I was like. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do this for a living. I shall ruin your careers. Like, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing, right? <coughs> and they were like, just do you. And um, and we know the business a little bit. And yeah, then it just worked from there. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then that turned into seven years. That turned into seven years. Mm. What What would you say you're most proud about that you guys were able to do together? Um, I don't think there's anything stand out. It was just what I'm proud about is just that that non-stop dedication to it and working hard and just hitting those steps as you go up. Mm-hmm. So that whole process. Mm. Yeah. Then um then when 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 does this end or <coughs> cuz now now they need to go to universal and yeah. then yeah what happens? Yeah, yeah no the, I was talking about Kenzo earlier that's when he was born okay. about 2017 and that's when you know I started uh, like it was a lot of fun and um it was really exciting up to that point, traveling around the world, touring, doing all of that stuff. But my first firstborn was uh, was born, and I was kind of feeling like staying here a lot more, yeah. and you know, being ratch on the road just didn't feel the same way like it did in my late twenties, early thirties. Yeah. So we started looking at growing the team around the guys, professionalizing that office, and just staffing it from tour managers to road managers to publicists to uh, legal to accounting to marketing to you know all of those roles. We had about twelve people. Uh, 12 at one point. Permanent employees. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> From digital to yeah. Monthly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Monthly. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Because it must was, have been crazy. Because right? we were starting to build like we were starting to build soul generation records. Yeah. We were starting to mm. um, build some um, properties like festival ideas and all these concepts. Um, and yeah, that's the time I started looking for a, like a Universal or Sony or Warner, one of the major deals. Because at this point, we were doing pretty well in Africa. We needed to go outside of Africa, and for that you need the big boys because yeah. you know that's expensive mm-hmm. uh, to market and plug and PR and tour and media tours. In I don't know if you pick like six, seven, eight countries in mm-hmm. you know Europe, US, that gets a little bit costly. So found them a couple of deals, Warner Universal. We did that together, and then um, a, a management agency as well, who they with to this day because they were similarly placed as those uh, as those labels. And uh, we went from this point on. It was in 2019. They went to Universal and I started Ace. Mm. So there's um, um, so Ace begins after. Uh, it's been always from the beginning, from about 2010 when I okay. registered Africa Centric, but Africa Centric Entertainment was yeah from 2019. From 2019. Yeah. yeah, and it was me and Jules. Jules was kind of the COO at at uh, S- Saudi uh, Saudi Soul Entertainment, which is the company. Mm. Yeah. So she came with me, yeah. and uh, yeah, she's my co-founder at Ace. Nice, mm. mm. nice, Jules. So, from your from your own perspective, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> from your own perspective, right? What do you think makes like a qualified talent manager? I say uh, qualified. Mm, yeah. Qualified. I'm. <laughs> I don't think there's the uh, qualification. Uh, qualific- <laughs> mm. So many people have their homies. Just you're, you're now my manager. I'm a talent manager. Yeah. yeah. True. I think yeah. managers, when we look for them, because Ace is a management agency partially as well, so we're always looking for the best managers um, in town. And thank God they are with us. Uh, shout out to Clinton and Jer and Musao and um, and and everyone from that side. Um, Simon, um, it's about having like you need to switch a lot between two hemispheres, right? Because 
in one given day as a manager of a music act or a you know a, a film star or a sports star you have to go from legal meetings to creative meetings to accounting meetings. so you have to switch between your left and right quite a bit so you can't you know can't do so well at like conceptualizing music video concepts and ideas and strategies around releases and 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 your visuals and then get freaked out by a spreadsheet you know like mm. you, you still have to go to that accounting meeting you still have to go to that legal meeting so managers i think a good qualified manager is is a bit of a left and right hemisphere and you can switch in between a bit yeah, mm. can be so just being good at everything microsoft puts out um <laughs> basically <laughs> wow <laughs> that's all you had from powerpoint excel what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly i think yeah. that's it because I, I, i think there's um there's a clip of kanye that he says that a talent manager or an artist manager uh, is very similar to like the role a ceo plays in a company and it's like a full time job because yeah um when you look at an artist as a brand and then you realize all the different um elements that come with that then that requires dedication the ded- yeah. dedication that a ceo would have for a company actually mm-hmm. yeah because it is a product right i mean you're i don't like talking about it, looking at it from that perspective but just mm-hmm. to break it down so that when people come into the business they don't have these crazy expectations of what is this yeah. juju magic vibes kind of a thing it's yeah. pretty straightforward you know yeah. like but you're in the business of selling emotions in many ways yeah um and musical products and you know and that's that's what I actually like about it you know it's yeah. it's not a toothbrush or you're producing this and selling that onwards it's yeah. there's also no right or wrong which is kind of interesting yeah. um so there's a lot of a lot of things that you can uh, you can get done in a day and do in a day as well are there people you've had to say no to who have approached to for management um yeah yeah because it's, <laughs> it's <not tonight. laughs> because yeah it's you, you also have to be realistic with your time you know and and with your with your capacity so i'm mm-hmm. trying to obviously grow the team yeah um with guys that just you know i've been looking watching for last 10 years being in the industry and those are some of the people i mentioned that are on our team and they're like this navy seal team of talent and event <laughs> management guys <laughs> navy seal <laughs> ready to go to war yeah. so at so at s currently you have uh, omanala yeah, yeah okay. fast, fastest man yeah. you have matata yeah, yeah, you have majors major you have calligraph calligraph you have fena fena nice. you have nick mutuma nick. you have barack jacuzzi barack you yeah. still have blank bill Uh, Blinky no but he's putting out I'm really excited we never signed him actually we yeah. just work a lot closely it's a, it's not just who we work with and sign yeah. directly but yeah. we like to work with anybody we can on all the projects that we do yeah. yeah Chris Kager yeah Chris yeah yeah 100% MDQ uh, MDQ we've been working as well yeah. now she's fully focusing as well on her on her blankets and wine so yeah. who else did I miss out Oh Alwin yes yeah Erwin when is the music when well. is when is the music comeback. dropping man Uh, for real Alwin Tigers and Lionesses is 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 has been doing this thing and now he's got three projects actually that we're about to drop this year three yeah in one year there's mm-hmm. one project this year and two projects next year okay i'll yes. say yeah. next year okay actually two projects this year still yeah there's like okay. an ep and there's a full album nice. which wow. he worked on over here in these studios and that's his he says that's his favorite album so far mm. this is a long long run with him hey because he is he again immediately plays on a global stage with mm. that voice yeah and those lyrics and that production um yeah he's he's somebody to really watch out for him So with this wide spectrum because now there's athletes here there's actors mm. here there's um, a lot of musicians right <clears throat> what is the consideration consideration for you guys, for you guys. like why 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 Omanala why because we it's it's like I'm not sure if you're familiar with UTA United Talent Agency for example mm. it's one of the biggest or CCA one of those biggest talent agency in yeah. the US yeah. you know they represent hundreds if not thousands of 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 talent across the board because Uh, the consideration here is it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity in the realm of music uh, or sports or film yeah. or modeling or fashion whatever it is you still need the similar attention of helping you professionalize your offering your services to be able to make sure that you're operating at your optim- optimum yeah. you know in in the west in the US a talent has so many agents across different areas mm-hmm. geographically you know depending on what part of your business as well from PR to your media to your endorsements which we do a lot uh, to then 360 talent management as well mm-hmm. which is something that we only do for about 10 10 or 15% of our roster okay. it's full 360 otherwise we're most agents for a lot of the talent that you mentioned from the endorsement deals both exclusive non exclusive business development yeah. bookings merchandising stuff like that how does the money work here like what 
Um, what streams of revenue do you take a percentage from, mm-hmm. and what would that look like? Yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, the, the the ones where we primarily take a commission from is is endorsement deals because that's what we do. We're kind of like the middle ground between the corporate world and the talent world, gotcha. and try and find the kind of fun, good endorsement uh, brand ambassador influencer campaigns that really you know strike at the core, strike at the hearts, mm-hmm. and just. Um, that's really something that we enjoy and conceptualizing those kind of campaigns. And so it's not just buy this product kind of a thing. You know, yeah. it's it's a little bit more than that. I like to think outside the box from that perspective. Yeah. Um, those are the kind of revenue streams. The, the, the issue, the main issue over here about revenue streams is is um, is the lack of enforcement of copyright and uh, yeah. copyright yeah. laws. Mm. So you know. Where else that when sucks, the, man. That like, sucks. why, man? Like, it's 2023, guys. Like, <laughs> is there hope that that will change? I think so. I think the I, I think the new CS. Um, um, I think he's his head is in, in the right place. Yeah. Okay. It's talent to hella campaign and stuff. This needs to be the cornerstone of it. Okay. Not just the gigs and given the opportunities and given yeah. the bonuses for yeah. records and all that kind of stuff. Okay. The long term solution that would make the biggest impact is if they just enforce the laws that are already mm-hmm. there. Because the laws so, are there. It's the literally just there. enforcement. Yeah. Just and I can only imagine how much money is lost, bro. It's insane. And it's also what type of money, right? The talent mm-hmm. over here generally makes short-term decision because their money comes from bookings, endorsement deals, touring. So it's always like your time, your money equals this, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you have like your collection agency collecting your royalties and stuff like that and you're getting that check for the work that you've done. In yeah. the past. Elsewhere, if you have a company, mm-hmm. your company value grows and you or if, with your shares that you've built a company with, you know, you can you can sell those, you mm-hmm. make money from something that you've created Over five time. years, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, that's how it works in the States. You know, you had a hit 10 years ago. If you had a global hit, and it's, you still that, check, that check still comes in every month or every month, quarter. Yeah. That keeps you at ease. You don't have to be struggling, you know, short-term yeah. decisions and making mm. things. You can also just depend on the work yeah. that you did before. So when, when MCSK is sending Calligraph 2500, yeah. do you get something from that? Uh, royalties, uh, uh, ro- managers generally, uh, ma- managers generally don't get, don't, royalties. Don't, get okay. don't touch royalties. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mostly your, um, you know, um, it's it's management is generally not on that. That's your publishing and stuff like that. The mm, publishers okay. take from that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do you think managers should get royalties? Yeah, I think so. And there's deals that where managers do actually get yeah. royalties, but it's also who paid for that yeah. music, who put it out there, who distributed yeah. it. Those are okay. all the things that come into yeah. consideration. Because music is is expensive, bro. Because um, you've like to um, yeah. to put out like a really good, well produced, mixed, mastered record. It's expensive, it's, bro. Yeah. That shit is not it's not cheap, man. Well, bro, it's changed uh, a, a lot music video. in the last <laughs> in the last twenty right? years. It's changed a lot in order to put up quality of like you know international quality or streaming quality for yeah. Spotify or Apple Music. Twenty years ago, you had to record in a place like this only. Yeah, you know, like yeah. where the equipment over here and the infrastructure and the studios over here at, at Snowball shout out is <laughs> is very expensive. But these yeah. days you can record like Earl Wynn stuff that you that you that was recorded in his bedroom. In his house. Yeah. 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 So you can actually the, the price of putting music out there has dramatically reduced. Yeah. Yeah. But then you have you you must have Your like really best. good engineers exactly. at your disposal to do that. Unless you can engineer it yourself. Yeah. Like record by yourself. 100%. Do everything by yourself. Yeah. Uh, then now do marketing because you need a bu- good budget to do proper marketing. Yeah. Shoot a proper music video. It's still like no, an yeah, expensive from, yeah. affair for sure, man. No, from that, from that perspective, the whole package to put it out there. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you look at artists like, uh, you know, maybe established musicians like Banner Boy, Drake, um, who you assume they would probably just wake up, put out a project and tweet about it and it will be everywhere. But you look at how much they spend in marketing and then you're like, damn, bro. Yeah. It never stops. And it's also a snowball effect, right? At the beginning, it's just... <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> You could just got to put it out there and do your mm, best when true. you're talking about these types of artists. Yeah. It's a snowball effect already at this point. You know, they... It's, it's it's rolling. So when you said they tweet about it, I mean, of course, with their 20, yeah. 30, 50, 90, you know, yeah. 200 million, million followers. followers. So that time, Beyonce put on an album with full visuals, randomly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just tweet. like that on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a level of pies. Yeah. 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 No, no hype before, nothing, man. It's you nice. Walk up to 14 music videos. It's nice being, yeah. Yeah. being at that level. So many NDAs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, so many NDAs. So many. <laughs> Imagine coming from work and your wife was like, "What? What did you do today?" <laughs> Can't talk about Can't it. Can't touch this. <laughs> so you're shooting a whole music video with Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, you're like, Oops. Can't tell you, man. Uh, which, which, which is your favorite field? Which one? Which one is more fun? Let me not say favorite. Which one is more fun? The music, the sports, the acting. 
Mm, you know, music is is that's the universal language. You know, yeah. it's probably the purest. Yeah. Um, probably the purest and the most impactful out of them all, mm. you know. But the sports stuff that we launched last year, just Aces, Ace Sports, Aces, yeah. that's, that's uh, it's really fun, hey? Um, I love it. It takes you to different places and as well brings more opportunities to the music business. You mm. see the main idea behind launching sports as well as start having the sports arena also be something where music comes into play because that's, that's the whole issue here, I think. Nobody really looks at the experience of the attendees or has not looked at that for a yeah. long time. When you go to a KPL game, when you go to Mashamaji Derby, you would imagine elsewhere in the world, these kinds of things, you walk in there and it's the stadium is pumping, you know, there's entertainment, there's merchandise, there's activities, there's experiences, there's food, there's all of that stuff. Not when you walk into Nyaya Stadium. There's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, there's, uh, <laughs> there's a smoky pasua guy over there, some boiled eggs, bro. Because I started taking my kids. Like when I was a kid, my dad took me to football games. So now that I was taking my kiddos, I was like, what? Already, like, you know, we're struggling on the pitch a little bit, you know, mm. we'll get there, but then yeah. there's nothing else, like no there's entertainment. There's no experience around it. Yeah. So the whole, the whole idea was to kind of bring sports and entertainment together yeah. um, and, uh, and make it an experience. So when you walk in there, you've got the whole, sh you know, shebang. Yeah. Mm. Nice. What would the legal for this look like, man? <laughs> dealing with all, yeah. So dealing with all these corporates, all yeah. these artists, all these deals, legally, like, you speak to your lawyer every day. <laughs> Because your lawyer becomes your best friend. He's literally yeah. my friend. Right? He's literally yeah. my best friend. He's one of my best friends, Alan. Kush Dog. Shout out, yeah. bro. Kush is, yeah, 100%. That song, A Lot, no? A Lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I think there's a part where, you know, you also have a lot of... That's uh, 21 Savage and Yeah, 21 Savage yeah. and Jekyll. There's a part where it's like a lot of lawyers too. There has to be a lot of people. It's a, because because that's, that's part of the professionalizing, making sure that those contracts are in place. Yeah. Because mm. there's a lot of... Yeah. The, this industry particularly is very subject to and has been always, you know, um, a source of so many disputes from, yeah. you know, from royalties to, you know, to your split sheets to who did that and who created that and who ripped off this, you know, like, so, yeah, it's important to to make sure that the legalities are in place. Yeah. At, uh, at, at that, sorry, at that level, do you read contracts through and through? Do I at this point, mm -hmm. the contracts that we come across, there's several areas that you can just skip to that are the mm -hmm. important parts. Okay. The rest is pretty much, you standardize it as much as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to, each contract is not that different, right? Okay. It's either a mm -hmm. publishing contract or a representer mm -hmm. or endorsement deal. So, yeah. So you jump straight into the money. So, <laughs> straight to the bank. In and out the bank, bitch. Let's look at the important thing, sorry. IP, intellectual property, whatever, sure, you guys be good. Compensation, okay. this is looking pretty solid. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um. I do that with me. I like when he gets in character. <laughs> I do that with all my contracts. Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing you read. I don't even know if they got my name right. <laughs> How much? Bank okay. details, correct. <laughs> Actually, no, no, no. Uh, talking about contracts, which reminds me, right? So, for instance, if it's a musician, mm. uh, typically for you and from what you've been doing, right? How long would you... Um, draft a contract for like what is the what what makes more sense for you what you generally you like? like um generally it's this this industry takes a little bit of a while endorsement deals mm -hmm. of the size of when you see Yashinsky and johnny walker or yeah. south soul and chrome and stuff like that or major and captain morgan and barak and that this takes sometimes over six months to maybe over a year to even like or a couple mm -hmm. of years to even nice. get you know yeah. because these endorsement deals they don't come around like bookings you know you see Artists having endorsement deals maybe uh, two or three a year at max. And it only touches, let's say, the top 10% of the talent as well that have the influence, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, generally the contracts you want to have when you're representing somebody three to five to seven years. Three years with somebody who is established because you, you can... You can get your return on investment and work with them There's because they're moving already. ship. There's a moving ship already within three years kind of a thing. Midterm, I think five years and greenfield talent that you bring up probably seven years because it does take a while. Mm. To build yeah. a proper brand. Yeah, this is really about endurance. You know, there's no silver bullet or magic formula per se. There are certain things that if you stick to, you're more likely to be successful or lucky as they say. Preparation meets, you know, mm. uh, opportunity kind of a thing. But it, there's no cutting corners. You just mm. have to be consistent, endurance, keep on being able to put out music and focus on it 100%. If you can do that, yeah. eventually, if you've got talent and everything, things will work. Out. Things will work. Because now this is uh, simultaneously pushing the brand and the marketing. 
which would be from a perspective how would you differentiate that brand brand is what, what what are you what are you saying who are you you know that's your brand how do you how you want to be perceived marketing yeah. is just the tool that you get the brand out there mm. with you know, pr social media above the line below the line digital and you guys do that in house or you outsource uh, we do that inside in house yeah in house yeah that's a big team how many guys do you have now 12 12 people mm. permanent yeah there's four there are four that are part time yeah, yeah. That's a big team, man. Nice. Congrats, man. You nice. guys, yeah. We've literally seen you guys grind from, yeah, but we need from to. the jump. <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy. Like, if you hadn't gone out with Saudi Soul that one night, would all and be made, yeah. And yeah. made promises. <laughs> and made <laughs> side, side with blood that night. Yeah. What if you you'd have decided to just sleep at home? Yeah. Things and there's many things like that in life, right? So when people yeah. say, Mm-hmm. You know, as you get older or whatever it is, just learn to say no more. I'm like, no, just mm-hmm. say yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never, know, you never <laughs> know where that might lead to. Like, well, I said yes prematurely yesterday, yeah. and look yeah. where I ended up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. And you have a whole business. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then when does Oktoberfest happen? Because would that be like the biggest festival? I think it is so, the, the, the biggest festival in East Africa. Because how many four stages? Four stages, 150 acts, three days. Mm. Yeah. That, is that is insane to what, last year we had what 30 35,000 people Oof. over the weekend that is crazy that is but it's a it's a massive team hey it's a massive team like, together with Tusker and EABL and all of their agencies and everybody who's working on this is it's yeah. it's, it's it's let's say the core team of people who really work on this is like 50 And then they have their own, and that's like 12 different agencies. Mm. Then they have their own team. So Small it's probably teams, like two, three hundred people that work on this thing. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Mm. To do it at that yeah. scale. 200 yeah. emails a day. It's, uh, <laughs> when is Oktoberfest? 28th, that weekend. 27th to 29th yeah. October. Yeah. Last weekend in October. That's yeah. in Kenya. Um, some weekends before that in Juba, in uh, Kampala, and in Dar es Salaam. So, so this is the first time you guys are going to yeah, East Africa. Yeah, East Africa. And that, that you know, That's all, always the vision since 2019 is to really create a touring circuit in East Africa because like we talked about it earlier, mm. it's it's really strange that how many times do you see Tanzanian artists performing here? Yeah, sure. Or Ugandan artists, Kenyan artists performing there. Yeah. For some reason, I mean, we speak the same language. Yeah. The cultures are not that, you know, different. not that different, yeah. but mm. we don't, We we just don't fuck with each other enough, you know. I think so. Yeah. East Africa really. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, true. We don't fuck with each other. Yeah. Enough. So yeah. the whole East Africa version is that four weekends, four countries, four cultures bring together. Yeah. So the concept is in each country, like Kenya, for example, 70% percent will be focused on Kenya, and then 30% percent you get the vibes from East Africa yeah. to kind of bring things together. It's like and you the imagine. And the other countries. Say what? And th- that would be the same uh, with the other countries. Yeah, exactly. Like you want to take the the the, the blueprint that works of the festival, and you know the structure, the management, the, yeah. the 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 experiential, the scale of it, and then give it its flavor. You know, from each individual country, because mm-hmm. you can't just export yeah. something somewhere. Yeah. So what 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 essentially is um, SS responsibility with the festival? Uh, we co we co conceptualize it because we conceptualize it back in 2019. So it's been always with us, kind of a thing. It's something that we've always loved doing, and that's what we eat, sleep, and live. Like we don't, we're not an events agency per se. We're a project management agency for large scale projects like this, where you mm-hmm. need a, a project management team of let's say six, seven, eight people, like these Navy SEALs that manage all of these work streams mm-hmm. from digital marketing, PR, above the line, below the line, setup, invitation, merchandise, uh, you know, uh, the beer experiences, uh, the, the the sports experiences, all of that stuff that kind of combines it together. So our role is to, uh, my, my role specifically, I'm the festival director for the whole of East Africa, then Juliet is the project manager for the whole of East Africa, and we project manage the entire thing to come and, you know, yeah. come together as ideally as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So this is, uh, wait, so you said um, Kenya goes fast. Wait, so it's not happening simultaneously the same weekend? Right? No, 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 no. Because Can you really want to give, like, you want to create a touring circuit. You see, like, Southern okay. Africa, okay. in Africa, there's only one other touring circuit. And touring circuits are really beneficial, right? Mm. The, the whole idea behind, if you look at a tour in Europe or US and stuff like this, mm. the first image that comes to mind is a bus, you know, and kind of like a tour bus, And you're just cruising from city to city. Like, that's how tours work. Yeah. You may be on tour for a month or two months. You play three, four times a week, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday shows. Um, and you're able to, you know, within a month or two months, play for you tens of thousands it. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Which is how you spread your spread your art, right? Yeah. 
it's not that simple over here. There's nothing like you can't tour bus many places. 2016, live and die in Africa, like you were talking. That was the whole image, that whole tour bus with the yeah. boys on Ooh. it. That was like, if you're going to do a tour, you got to have a tour bus, I think. And that It's expensive to do that here, bro. Well, it is it's still cheaper than flying around, for example. That's, you know, look at what tickets cost these days. If you yeah. want to go from Kenya to Tanzania to Uganda to like, yeah, uh, to, Juba. To, uh, to, to Juba or to Kigali to Rwanda, like just that circuit, bro. These tickets are like 50, 60, 70. 70K. It's crazy. Like, it's a but one also, hour flight. But also the lack of infrastructure in the sense that, like for instance, when you guys did Live and Die, in terms of even just the technical setup, sound stage, yeah, everything has to live from Nairobi. So that's an additional cost. I uh, know it's, like, it's actually it's actually more expensive than in places like South Africa or the US because you have so much competition, so much availability, so much infrastructure, so many actually like venues that are mm. built for performing, yeah. you know, that are anywhere from 500 to 5,000, you know, to your Barclays Center, to your, you know, stadium. O2 Arena, yeah. to your stadiums, so indoor, O2, like indoor, 10, 15, 20,000. Yeah. You see, we don't have that over here. So for Live and Die in Africa tour, we had to build everything from scratch for like, that because our crazy. goal was three to 5,000. Mm. You know, Meru doesn't have a venue for three to 5,000 unless it's a stadium, mm. but still stadium. It's just, just an flat empty grass. Stadium, bro. It's just green. Yeah, you have to it's set just it up green from field. So to build a venue on a on a green field or in a sports club or on a, in a in a stadium for five thousand people back then that almost cost like a hundred thousand dollars to just yep. <laughs> to just be able to welcome people to like and you have to do all the stops because because I, I mean if if uh, if there were venues that were ready it's just plug and play in Akuru. Then there's another venue that is plug and play. In exactly. You just Nairobi, show there's up multiple in your venues. tour bus. Mombasa, yeah. yeah. And then every artist benefits because everyone just shows up. Everything. Does yeah. your Front show. of house is there, speakers are there, stage is there, just lighting is there, everything yeah. is there. You just so plug you and play. All, all these things across the country. Yeah, you have to. Mm, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Then, a couple of trucks. Uh-huh. Then there's probably. personnel now because mm-hmm. each each thing requires someone to operate it. Yeah. So you we still have to move with this people. personnel. That tour yeah. in 2016 was 80 people on the road just to make it happen. Well, imagine. Sometimes 120, depending on how many setup agencies were building stuff on ground, if you had yeah. multiple agencies. So there was like 100 plus people on the, on the road. I Wherever we checked into a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, also very loose people. Yeah. Very questionable <laughs> characters. Many of them. You know yourself. <laughs> so you'd, you'd need to book the entire hotel everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like English Point where we were staying in Mombasa, we had to take the whole, half, like two of those buildings. Like half, half of it. And yeah, because it's 80 people, bro. You know, oh, Ahil and team, bro. The family. Bro, how much would this cost? Like, if you estimate, like, the whole thing. The whole thing costed back then somewhere in the range of, like, 60, 70 million shillings. Whoa. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. So now think about who has 80 million shillings. <laughs> just like just go on tour, bro. Yeah. Infras- no, but I mean, like everywhere else around the world, you need to find the right partners to help you yeah. settle that. Yeah. You see, you can still make money over here off of ticketing, mm. which is another big problem. Yeah. You know, we talked we about like, we talked about enforcement of copyright and those collection agencies and getting your royalty money and stuff like that. But the mm. other thing is, I have a lot of people coming to us with concepts, festivals, events, and all that kind of stuff. And when you listen to them, like, what are your, like, channels of revenue? How are you ho- hoping Ticketing. to make money? They're like, ah, oh, merchandise and, you know, sponsorships and Ticketing. this and that. And then I'm like, what about ticketing? Oh, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 also ticketing. Because, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. you know, most people, if you look at these big gigs, how much it costs to put on, if you look at their ROI, ticketing is just, you know, uh, one small, small part of it. Still. Yeah. You need the big brands. You need the big brands. But as well, I think, you know, in Europe, and US and elsewhere, when you're buying a ticket for a show, you're spending $150, $250. Mm. Even there, it's it's for somebody like, you know, for our festival goers and 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 it's for them it's also a little bit too much. It's it's not cheap because shows shouldn't be cheap. It's yeah. so much goes into it. Yeah. Um but over here, you know, tickets are oftentimes like two, two, five, one thousand five hundred. Yeah, sure. There's these more produced shows that the VIP seven, eight, nine. Obviously, boys to men and stuff like this. They're targeting a different, uh, different audience. <laughs> but the general pre- oh yeah, no, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are standing on chairs. I, mean, I, 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 I hear you. I see you. Uh, you know, so I think it's what I oftentimes say. If you give people four months of marketing a gig, mm. like you should, mm. and not the three weeks that's like the average somehow yeah. that happens That's what you guys here. do with Oktoberfest. You literally announce one week too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's an annual. People know. We've talked about it. The first, the first drop was in June. Like, get ready. Line up one week uh, too. Right now. And then, uh, now. and then now a cardinal is not in the lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Then They're social media begins. <laughs> do, you, do you guys call you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
The guys come, they're like, Mark, what the fuck? <laughs> exactly. 150 acts so. and our cardinal is not there. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, guys, the guys never understand everyone, what yeah. happens behind the scenes, though. Yeah. yeah, but if you give people four months, even in Europe, people save up for tickets. If you yeah. give four mm. months, you can prepare for a 15, 20k ticket mm. to get a proper experience. You know, mm. stuff like that. So, so I think that's that's yeah. another thing that yeah. is a bit of an issue over here that you're not making enough money from from yeah. from tickets. So you have to find alternative ways, sponsors. And, yeah. I think the biggest game changer and whoever would be able to do this, whether it's the government or someone private, mm-hmm. would be to build infrastructure in the country, bro. Because, like, I look at this studio, like, Snowball, yeah. just by the virtue of this studio being available, the space being available, mm. that um, is a space that is well-equipped, has space, things can happen. And you look at the movement and what happens here, by just the space being available, mm-hmm. then tells you a lot yeah. in terms of just making sure that there's infrastructure and just let people people shine with it. Yeah. Exactly. I think whoever invests in spaces in Kenya would oh, cash definitely. in. That's it, really. Infrastructure and food, yeah. like that's another big one, right? It's it's elsewhere in the world. Even look at sports, for example, in terms of infrastructure. You know, like you can't a kid when he gets out of his house. Within two or three blocks, you're going to come across some sort of a public basketball mm. court. Mm. And that's a multi-purpose with a tennis thing. Yeah. And, mm. You know, and there you can sharpen your skills for free. Mm. You know, over here, it, you know, that's a big struggle. You know, there's no two, three blocks and there's something public. Mm. Everything is private in many instances, yeah. bro. You have and, to pay for it. You, have to uh, you know, the so, sometimes lim- is limited. There's so much mm. talent here, but it just doesn't have the opportunity or the access to sharpen those skills mm. early on. Mm. Um, so infrastructure is a big one, but that is an expensive one, right? I yeah. mean, there's and there's no real return on investment there, you know, yeah. like public spaces that should come from taxes, you oh, know, God. and then we know another thing. <laughs> <laughs> the taxes, man. The, 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 the CS is your friend now. Exactly. What, what are your what people? Is this thing? Is it like a good Holla guy? Them. I really, I, I, uh, <laughs> he's a good guy. He's a good guy. That's what I said earlier, bro. He's, he's, got, a, he's, got, a, he's got a great yeah. head on his shoulders. He's got an agenda. He's got, um, you know, a campaign that's, in my opinion, quite clear. Mm. It's still early days, mm. you know. Now you're looking at Studio Mashinani that was even in the previous administration. I'm not sure if you're aware, but they built like over they 20 did, or yeah. 30 studios nationwide. Yeah. Then I'll start something. I know, some, I know some guys who became millionaires from that project. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the musicians though? Was it? Yeah. There was one, 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 one of the guys is a former musician. Mm. He had like two big songs. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to him. Look, I mean, the, so I think, <laughs> I think that's the, it's 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 a, it's a solid effort right now. I think this mm. is this is an opportunity with this new administration, with this new energy, with this new um, new agenda and new kind of campaign to craft something. Yeah. I think it's so. I think it's on the right track. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let me take you back to the event space. Like, there's yeah. been several cancellations. Like, even the last two weeks, maybe. Ooh, bro. Yeah. Shoke shoke cancelled. What's yeah. happening? Shansi. Shoke shoke cancelled. Shoke shoke. Um, but yeah. the one, the one I'm happy got cancelled was Yegenye this. Yegenye 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 Kenyan. Just keep it, man. Like, just get your own name, man. Yeah. Like there's been a press release on Twitter every other. Oh, you, you didn't, you yeah. didn't realize? No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm saying this is happening a lot. It's you, you have to look at the macro economy. You know, like. It's fucked, hey? Mm. Uh, people are struggling out there, you know? And brands also, they're not willing to spend as much, mm. you know? The reason behind all of these, because I speak to most of these people that you just mentioned, is mm-hmm. they were hoping uh, that sponsors are coming on board. Yeah. Sponsors are kind of like, 50, nah, 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 you know, just like... Mm. And then they just don't come through because, uh, yeah, it seems to it's, be... Yeah. Um, people are afraid to spend right now because, yeah. I mean, inflation is through the it's roof. Crazy. Like, you never know what the dollar is going to do and one mm. day to the next... People out there as well, they're just not, they're just not, they're not spending that yeah. much. Hey? So it's a bit of a tight, it's a bit of a recessive economy. It's a bit of a, okay. so I think that's, that's the main reason. Also, there's just a lot of people that, that, that don't just, they don't do it right. You know, there's. We know them. <clears throat> yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> and, but, but genuinely, I think it's a good lesson. And I hope um, the guys involved um, learning from this, that for sure, like you said, you can't set up a big, event on ticket money. It doesn't yeah. work. Um, secondly, you can't hope, you can't wish and pray that a corporate is going to come give you money. It's always nice to have, but then it's never a guarantee. Yeah. So if you don't have the money up front to set up an, an event, then don't, don't do, do it. it. Yeah, that's it. A lot of people want to take Simple. a risk because they just want to do it. I get yeah. it where they're coming from. And you have it in conversation. I see a lot of these people believe the moment they have a conversation that's it. that they've got the deal. Mm. Don't count that money until it's in the bank. Right. Yes. For your deposits and stuff like that. And, and have a contract that says, 
30 days later, you'll get the rest of it or something like that. Yeah. Until yeah. then, don't mark it. Don't mark it. It's or too much of a risk. Bro, sure. Russia, yeah, like Shoka Shoka said, they're going to refund guys tickets. For yeah. 50 yeah. days. Because yeah. yeah. think about Shoka Shoka, yeah. right? So you've, you've, you've already committed down payments to venues. You've paid... Yeah. You've paid artists down payment to book them, right? Yeah. Some of those contracts not say that, you yeah. know, if you cancel your event for your own reasons, then it's not Because yeah, yeah, yeah. also, yeah. I probably said no to other opportunities because I had your yeah. down payment, I had your yeah. commitment. Yeah. That's what so it is they've about. lost money. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're definitely in debt, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's never good when yeah. some you know when something like that happens. But uh, hardly ever you will come out of it, you know, it's <laughs> on crazy. the positive side. Yeah, because now they have to look for money elsewhere to refund guys' tickets. I think that's yeah. why they were like for five to sixty days. But it's just a tough lesson, bro. Like and it's, it's a tough lesson. It's a tough economy. To the next one, because imagine like a few months from now, shocker, shocker three. <laughs> it's difficult to market it if yeah. if, if, if you postponed twice. And then cancel. Mm-hmm. Unless they, they need like a really good artist who everyone wants to yeah. see to sort of yeah. bounce back. Yeah. And, yeah. Banner Boy. and Barry, and <laughs> yeah. Barry, Barry, Barry has a good sense for that. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah. Now Barry will be fine, man. And the good thing is he has um he has a lot of experience just yeah. in the industry. Like he's yeah. not a newbie. Yeah. And he's yeah, and he's, he's a thinker. You know, it's his stuff has oh sorry, I keep on yeah. in this mic. Cool. He's got he's got uh, you know, he's he's I, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Yeah? He's, yeah. A, he's a pusher. It's not easy in this business, bro. I won't lie yeah. to you. But that's what I mean. It's it's about consistency, right? Mm. So how do you make sure, like with Saudi, it's consistency. You just have to consistently keep on delivering, I guess, you know, wins. Mm. And it's okay with some losses here. Yeah. Was it a shocker for you when the boys announced that they're taking a break? Mm, no, um, because I think as a manager of a group, particularly as opposed to a solo artist, mm. your main job really before anything else, is to make sure that the group remains intact. Mm. And that's always been one of the, like... The struggle. Uh, one of the, yeah, uh, one of the biggest focus here as a manager of a group is, like, managing the dynamics, and all of that feeds into it. How well you're gigging, how well you're performing. Look, um, the guys breaking up, I mean, let's be honest, mm. you know? I don't think that's ever going to happen. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. They're homies, is, man. They're, Beyond... they're, they're homies, but they need to yeah. focus on their solo careers and, mm. you know, you know, retiring and coming back out of retirement is one of yeah, the oldest true. tricks in the books, yeah, too, yeah. you know? And when you announce it eight months ahead with plenty of shows <laughs> and touring, <laughs> like, guys, we're going to break up uh, in eight months, but before then, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. so fast, Canada tour, tour <laughs> US tour, but Europe tour, <laughs> Australia, come and see but, us, appreciate <laughs> us. But let's be honest here. Yeah. I know you guys know this. Yeah. But don't you think uh, that commercially it made sense to do yeah. that? Commercially, Because yeah. now everyone is like, I have to I buy have that to ticket. Because this is <laughs> yeah, Zot- yeah, Bring the merchandise, bring everything. <laughs> and they still have a new album. They still yeah. have an album dropping next year. It's so confusing. <laughs> Usually breakups are a little bit more like catastrophic. No, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this way it's like, no, I think in about eight months, I think we'll call it quits. <laughs> Eight months, hold on. When is, when is Soul Fest? Sorry, nine months. <laughs> it's like your girlfriend telling you, I'm going to break up with you next year. <laughs> but you have a vacation coming, you have a birthday. Yeah, but we have to do all those things. <laughs> See how you try now. Uh, vacations, okay, all of it. Let's uh, go. Expensive dinners. <laughs> Which begs the question, are they going to tour for the album? The new album? Probably. I think that... I think so they're not breaking They up. can even, no. like, individually push that thing. Okay. You yeah. know, like, they're one and mm. one and a whole. Like, mm. you know, okay. yeah. Shimano can rock that shit out. BN yeah. represents them as well. Yeah. When they're in town with Savara <laughs> together, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's like, that's the advantage of four as well. There's many yeah. disadvantages to being four in a group. Yeah. You know, like, splitting money four <laughs> ways. Yeah. But there's also many advantages. Oh, if you're having a bad day as Shimano, because, you know... Then there's three others to pull pull through. You yeah. Know? yeah. If you're having a bad day as Wiz, you're just having a bad day. There's True. nobody pulling through for you. Yeah. 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 Banner is busy dissing you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, <laughs> I think in my mind, the way I see it is more of um, they've always worked around the South Soul schedule. But now what's going to change is going to be their own schedules and then the sort of soul schedule. So it's going to become yeah. like secondary. And they all feed off of each other as well. Yeah. yeah. So they, I think they'll, they'll probably still tour with a new album. Yeah, and then when you want Saudi Soul to perform after they broke up, you know, like you'll pay $100,000 now. Yeah. To I swear. Them. Yeah. So you'll just, it's just economics here. You'll just do four gigs in one year as yeah. opposed to like 14 so or 20. Of, if, we'll all of this see. is a business decision. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's a brand that is taken... 20 plus years to build, bro. It does, isn't it? And and I wouldn't say it's a business decision to like, let's break up and, you know, but they also have their individual careers. They've got, you know, their their, their, their properties like Soul Fest. They've got, you know, Hustle Sasa, Soul Generation, all that stuff. 
Yeah. yeah, but also, bro, like genuinely, for like 20 years, they've just always been four. I'm like, they definitely skipped a stage where you develop yourself and do the things mm. that you really like that probably can't fit within that Group. sort of soul schedule. Because yeah. yeah. high school, uni together, then literally blew up. Yeah. So it's always been four guys together. So yeah. Polycap is a dad now. Yeah. Things are changing, man. Yeah. So I think it's a good decision as well. And 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 it's a living it's a living decision yeah, you know it's yeah. it will live it will have its own life you know it will yeah you need to have you know this is the thing the fifth now most important is, is show business mm. it's show this business. is what we somehow do not know how to do very well here you know like i remember just like 6 7 8 years ago when you go to tz for a gig there will be like four or five printed Tabloids, never mind what was online and stuff. They had like independent, not as part of like pulse inside insert yeah. into uh, into nation, nation yeah. or, you know, like individual, like you know, showbiz. You have to be a little bit controversial. You have to, you know, yeah. You and that's to... what we're saying, even with Banner Boy. Like, yeah. guys are surprised with all those interviews. I'm like, he's selling his album, guys. Like, he, yeah, he's... but it's so obvious. It's so, yeah, it's, it's, it's literally so obvious. obvious. <laughs> oh, J. Cole called me to pack. So... You see, and this <laughs> is it. This is, I think, he knows that's a headline. Yeah. This is the main thing over yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Artists over here are afraid to be controversial, which mm-hmm. controversy is the main feeding mechanism. It's the it's fuel so, to the yeah. fire. It so is. that people... It doesn't have to be blatant and obvious. Yeah. Like it, I, I shouldn't but it has to be ratchet. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but, that's should, but also, headlines sell, bro. Yeah. So it has to be... That's a headline. Sell. I was always telling the guys, bro, if you guys are going to be quiet for the next, like, two, three more weeks, I'm going to plant mm-hmm. a bag of weed and shaman's car <laughs> myself. <laughs> That weekend in jail is going to do all we, all we are we need. He's such a sweetheart. You know what? I'm letting you know where in advance. Maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's because if it's beer and you don't need to plant it. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, just call the cops. He'll have it on the way. <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, showbiz, yeah. you need to be controversial. But over what? here, people are afraid to be because yeah. you depend on the corporate money too much here. Too much. It's and too you know, much. you're pussyfooting around what you're going to do. And that's the problem. If you had your royalties, you'd be like, ah, fuck yeah, the system, bro. And also, you know what? I was ratch last night. This is what I did. <laughs> Because yeah, like, also if you think about it, and also we operate in a generation, no, no, in a time when there's so much happening, so much music, there's so much happening online. If there's no talkability, people will talk yeah. about the next artist and stream the next album, bro. Yeah. And technology is really screwing us as we speak. You know, uh, and you work in some of these structures now. What these big corporates use to like scan through your social media. It's no longer like you send them a report. These are the tweets that I did. But what are the tweets that you didn't do around the campaign? What you said, mm. that's some bullshit. That's weird. <laughs> uh, you know, like, so these softwares now scan. You just, as if you're an influencer or something mm. like that, working for a big brand, you have to give this software access to all yeah. your socials. Yep. And it just scans it and it like reads your metrics. And it's like, okay, homophobia, aggressiveness, you know, responsible <laughs> yep. drinking, irresponsible, you drug use, da 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 just, and it marks yeah. out of 10, and that there's basically your personality on like a spreadsheet, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. I did, now that I, in hindsight, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty rich. I'm brand. <laughs> <laughs> I am not necessarily. Ah, <laughs> oh, bro. Uh, that's why we, we just have to check the mother, so, yeah. mother wangara route. Yeah. That's, that's the way. Do not <laughs> be afraid. You know, that's what people like to see. A bit but of now, a train crash. What, what, who draws the line about showbiz? Like, what's too much? Nothing. There's never too much. Nothing. Nothing. So Eric Mondi is being right. Haven't you had no publicity? Are you for real? real? Yeah. He's He's jumping in sewage. You are talking about him. That's how he's doing it. That's how he makes money. But at what cost? At what cost? What? There's no cost, bro. His rank, bro. Hey, have you seen at I, what I, I, income? <laughs> <laughs> at what money in the bank? That's yeah. the question, bro. Yeah. Look, you have to. This is what it is. Entertainment okay. is meant to be. It's meant to have us. You know. That's how we started speaking. Is gossip. You know. That's the reason why Homo sapiens developed. You know, speech. Mm-hmm. It was literally the <laughs> theory. <laughs> the theory is gossip. Before, before then, as Homo erectus, you were like, "There, elephant, kill, eat, mother." You know. That was the communication. That was what you needed. As a hunter and gatherer, <laughs> but then motherfuckers got around the like fa- campfire and they were like, mm, "Yo, that girl over there, you see her hair? Oh, that's a bullshit. Yeah, that guy's such a dick. You know, it wasn't no longer. That didn't work. It was gossip that got us talking. Uh, they were like, "Yeah, that guy, he's a real asshole, bro. You see that girl? Oh, I, I can't believe it. So gossip is key, mm-hmm. and gossip, what fuels gossip, mm-hmm. is entertainment, True. and you know. Unfortunately, there's that part which is the antics, which is really cheap, you know, spastic yeah. kind of ratchet entertainment mm-hmm. that feeds the masses. But then there are people who, 
you know, stir up conversation in one way or another in a more, mm. you know, sophisticated or more, you know, you have to have the whole yeah. scale. Like Drake you know? is good at that. Yeah. Mm. Shout out to Edgar Bader, man. <laughs> 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 uh, from your own personal experience, right? You've been maybe over 10 years of doing business here. Um, is 15 it years in 15 Kenya. 15 now. Mm, but in music, 10. Yeah. yeah. Is, um, is, it, is it true, is white privilege a thing? Like, is it easier to do business if you're white in Kenya? Is that um, a thing? I mean, you know, it is a thing. Everything is a thing. You know, like white privilege definitely plays a role. But it's been moving as well very differently. It's yeah. a very different environment 15 years ago to this one as well. Yeah. Um, you have your pluses and minuses um, yeah. that come with anything that you have, you know, yeah. if you're white, if you're black, if you're in the music business, if you're entertainer, everything has a plus and a minus. And this one too. So there's some things that it plays for positively. Gotcha. There's some things that it plays for negatively. They'd be like, ah, you're giving this Muzunya all this business, bro. Yeah. Hey, what about us, bro? Let's zungu, eat. Zungu, yeah. So, you know, there's that part to it as well, you know, and it's also very easy for people to to uh, to single you out in many instances you know, mm-hmm. as well. So there's pluses and minuses to it all. There's some things that open doors for me, some things that doors I cannot open either, you yeah. know, or that get shut uh, just for the sake of Was it harder, like when, so when you're just setting up, like even, let's say Ace, okay, no, Ace is coming now, maybe at the time when you have a lot of experience, but earlier on, yeah. uh, was it harder to navigate, especially dealing with, you know, people in government and whatnot? I've never, I've never dealt with government until, until recently until with this recently. Talent Hala campaign, mm, yeah. you know, just to be able to lend a hand in terms of commercializing talent, which is the cornerstone of that campaign. Uh-huh. And that's what we, yeah. you know, that's what I think we've done well so far. That's yeah. what our whole raison d'etre is. So. Which is nicer now because you are a household name. Mm. As opposed to if you're just beginning but and you have to... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah like, like you said, snowball effect as well. But navigating it, I just it's either for you or not. You know, you mm. know there's, there's luck, there's hard work, there's... There's hustle, there's, you know. What is this talent of man? Like from, you know, from your own being from, uh, you know, having worked with them. What exactly is, because I feel like we've, we've covered it before on the pod, uh-huh. but I think yeah. there's like still a lot of controversy yeah, around it. Understand. and Yeah, there, there, there is that because you got to get it right in terms of the structure and how you, so it just doesn't become um, a senseless or without structure, without input as well of the private sector that has the experience yeah. program that actually doesn't impact and spends a lot of money, right? The whole what idea is, is talent, talent to hella is, you know, talent, monetizing talent. That's what it comes down to. Ah. And this is yeah. many of these things we've talked about, one yeah. through to five, for example, mm. is a part of that. Infrastructure is a big part of it. They're building, the you know, studios, they're building stadiums right now, the AFCON bid and all that stuff. Built? Stadiums are being built, bro. Really? Where? Yeah, all over the country right now, bro. Really? Yeah, 100%. Some of them are being paused because of how they're being designed and executed, but that's the whole 2027 AFCON bid. You know, we need to have a bunch of new stadiums. Mm. Um, you know, uh, in order to be so able to qualify. So, I like, hope they finish because most of the time they begin yeah. building stadiums and then they never they really finish the stadiums. Yeah. So there's there's always that, right? Let's yeah. hopefully this administration will make sure that they deliver on this. And it's a big cornerstone even of the overall administration, yeah. right? You see the yeah. president supporting it heavily and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. This, yeah. It, but goes back to what you're talking about yeah. earlier. Just have the infrastructure there, man. Like the talent is available, but they just need the infrastructure. I saw Ruto on TV saying like, I know you guys um, always question me about the stadiums I promised in the previous administration, but this new one is going to deliver. I didn't know it was true. Yeah. I thought he was just lying. Like he just does. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, it's happening. And the yeah. studio is being made as well. The, the studio was built there. already. Mashinani was... I studio told Mashinani you, I was, know someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they just refer, you know, you yes. need to put the structure around okay. them a little bit better, better management of it, yeah. you know, mm. uh, get some of the A-listers as well to highlight it because they haven't. You know, mm. you need to bring... All of that together for it to make sense. Okay, because you guys uh, so under t- uh, the marathon, the mm. Nairobi C- City Marathon that yeah. uh, you guys um, also powered. Yeah. Then there was, I think, the village at the rally. So that's yeah. talent. So that's talent to Hella because it's it's bringing the kind of basic design is you've got the stage for the performers to be able to show themselves. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the village around the stage, which is for other business people from the region. So from, you know, for example, WRC, yeah. the biggest chunk of all the vendors, and there were about 80 of them, mm-hmm. were from Nakuru County and stuff like that, showcasing, you know, small businesses, mm-hmm. selling food. So supporting the hustlers, the up-and-comers, mm-hmm. um, you know, giving them the platform to do it. So you can have as many of these events as possible. Like you have the Kipkeno, you had the village there, you had the bazaar mm-hmm. there, you had uh, Talenta Hela there, you had it at the WRC, you had it at Nairobi City Marathon, you have it at all the rugby events. Talenta Hela is the vehicle that funds 
this these villages to be built and to be executed so that talent can showcase, put themselves on a stage, sell their goods, introduce themselves to the market. So, yeah, so it's more, you know, there's the infrastructure, there are these events, you know, there's the, hopefully the agenda to try and, you know, uh, help commercialize and implement some of these laws that are in place that I think would be the biggest change that they can make. So it's a lot of that. It's just looking at how you, there's a lot of talent, but not many of them are commercially successful, yeah. right? You always, 90% of talent have to have some sort of a side hustle to survive. Mm. Right? And so, will the government put in money for this upfront or you still have to raise money for like this um, this project? For these projects? Yeah. Look, um, they, they, they bring the money. Um, um, how... Um, how it gets paid over time and some some of these things there's still some challenges around that yeah but yeah they bring they, 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 they the that's nicer they that's nicer yeah. now because you don't yeah. have to break your back yeah. trying to you know speak to corporates again do yeah. the same yeah because because um that makes a difference yeah, are yes. you gonna do more of this is there yeah. plans to do more of those yeah yeah definitely yeah we we think we're in the right place to kind of work with other stakeholders it needs to be really the whole industry coming together. Mm. You know, it doesn't otherwise make sense. So we, we're more than happy to put our time in there and, 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 and our expertise and our talent. And yeah, and I think many others as well. I think it needs to be, everybody needs to pitch in. Gotcha. Yeah. Is the government money good? Is the government money good? Yeah. Look, it's, they, they've got all the, you know, as opposed to how you think it works. They've got all of those things in place from, you know, from, um, um, what's the word? What's... Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, they're doing a lot of events. They've mm -hmm. been doing them for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, the suppliers, they're well-versed. Only thing, it, it does take some time. So you do have okay. to be, be, be ready for the fact that, mm -hmm. you know, from the talent okay. side, okay. even from the agency side, from the execution, that the money doesn't come as fast as, mm -hmm. as you need. So you need to, you know. And it comes in cash. They give you a big bag. No, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it did. Just <laughs> Is this wine? But then you open it like, oh, no, this is no. My I mean, the, the, the procurement, that's what I, the word I was looking for. The procurement, like infrastructure at the government level is, you know, especially with this new administration as yeah, well, they're trying to be very careful and trying to make it very... Yeah. But very it's sometimes, like you said, it takes time to get the money. It right? takes, but even so in private sector, put... you know, it's 60 days, 90 day payment yeah, terms, so all of these kinds the of things. Thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have to be very cautious about how you spend money. Because exactly. yeah. those the things you need to do with the money don't have they can't wait. Some of them yeah. can't wait for those. You need to book days. the venue, you need to book the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cash flow becomes Salaries cash flow becomes, becomes a oh big becomes a big yeah. thing. And that's what actually most of these when we're talking about all these cancellations, it's all a cash flow problem. Because mm. at a certain point, you you know, you've got the event, you're just waiting for when the money comes in and you need to calculate that stuff well because you'll find yourself two months without being able to pay deposits or your own team, and then oh. that's how companies die. Yeah, which is crazy because it doesn't mean you don't have. It's yeah. not like you don't have money; you just don't have it on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, you, are, you honest, are you good personally with money, or are you chucksy? Um, on a personal uh, level, I need to take some classes from you. <laughs> from me. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even answered. Oh, and he's like, "I'm gonna take." Like, oh, listen, it's 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 my team that keeps me in check. <laughs> Yeah, but I cannot Keeps me in check. <laughs> in check. In check. In check. Uh, yeah, check yourself yeah, yeah. before you wreck yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so checked. If you had yeah, access to all the cash, <laughs> then you can move. Then you can move. But, no, no. Uh, if, you saying, if, you, if you, yeah. as Myra had access to all the cash in the company. Oh, no, don't leave it. That's what happened last night. Yeah, I've seen... Ah. <laughs> I've seen, yeah, I've seen Ma Marek make bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, was it that obvious? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? We have to have fun. This is yeah. entertainment at the end of it. After all, uh, what is this? If you're not having fun, how are you meant to have fun? Yeah. How are we meant, you know, are you going to Kilif in December? Are you going to be there? A hundred percent, bro. It's ah, one of my favorite go. things there to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we keep saying ah. we'll sort our accommodation and you haven't sorted it. <laughs> do you have accommodation this time around? <laughs> It's, it's like you sleep. <laughs> My uh, Okay, let me let me let me let me, let me reward you. Okay, he doesn't need a shower to put either. A, a we shower. That's why I'm like, oh, we need no. to shower. He Keep doesn't shower either. Oh. There is water there, plenty full. There's a beach. Ah, what is this? Wait, so you don't have accommodation? Yet. No, I usually my accommodation, I check in on the day. If I'm there for three nights, the next time I show up at my room is like to pick up my luggage to leave. <laughs> no. so you know so how we roll, bro. Your suitcase. <laughs> it's just like, I need just one room for my suitcase. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and I'm, even uh, that same clothes like three days. <laughs> <laughs> you got your beach, nice <laughs> loose shirts. Ah, you I, know. Honestly, uh, I, I can't wait. Like I'm so excited <laughs> for some reason. Uh, I can't hey, wait. Hey, beneath the baobabs, bro. What a show, bro. Do you look in August? 
this previous one, Prince Kate. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just, it was solid. It was um, over a thousand people over those two days. Did you go? No, 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 but I oh, know okay. uh, Matt. Really try, yeah, Matt is doing a great job. Yeah, shout out to Matt, Matt. And, and the studio is coming up. I was there, I was on the grounds two months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the studio is coming up really well. Like he's building a permanent studio on the ground. Wow. On the ground. Yeah, like yeah. a permanent music studio. Yeah. So you can imagine. It's a whole thing. Especially during New Year's when you have all those artists performing and there's a studio there. Yeah. I can only imagine what's going to come out the of that. The collaboration. Yeah, that's going to be sick, bro. It's a whole thing. Uh, Cliff is nice, bro. With a lot of creatives moving there. Yeah, yeah, but you know, they all tell me they're moving there. I'm like, ah, bro, I'm not about to move to the Bundus. Bro, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, it's I like, visit. I need, like, if I'm going to move, and I do want to move to the coast, it'll be to Mombasa. Bro, let's move to the city. Nyali is nice, you yeah. know, I like it. Mm. But everybody, many people who move to these, uh, you know, these villages on the sea, mm -hmm. you know, like Watamu, Kilefi, yeah. Diani. Yeah. Ah, within three months, they're like, it's too slow. You still have space yeah. in your house in Nairobi. Yeah, I need to come, me. bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a little too slow. It's great. You yeah. have a, you know, you get you the wrong idea holiday after holiday. a vacay. It's a nice for a holiday home. Yeah. You know, after vacay, nice you're like, holiday. I could live here. <laughs> no, but nah. Nah. Yeah. Not every day. It's nice to be there for a few days, but not every day. Bro. Even no, yeah, I, yeah, but, but you know, for some, you know, yeah. to each its own. I mean, whatever. But I I couldn't. Not yeah. yet. Yeah. I mean, but it's a vibe, though. Khalifi, people are moving there. I'll stay in the city for life. Yeah, me too. I'll have holiday homes, but I'm not living Nairobi. <laughs> yeah. I want to live in Nanyuki so bad. Nanyuki? But of course, have like have a house somewhere in Kiambu that is close to Nairobi. Yeah. But I really want to live in Nanyuki, bro. Like, so bad. So I bad. mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Like, anything that you're, you know, like, you've got Mount Kenya over there staring at you every morning. It's, mm -hmm. it's grounding, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, you realize, you know, that you are just a, a, a speck in the yeah. spectrum of things mm -hmm. happening. That's also why I love the, you know, the coast. When you see that ocean, it somehow puts your life into perspective. Yeah. Check yourself a little bit, you know, and just do the do the work necessary. Mm -hmm. I think that's special about these places. You know, you can get very lost in your thoughts in this yeah. urban jungle a little bit. Too. How is there no chance? Because you have a team, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm part of a team. You're part it's of a not team, my team. Yeah. What is the team called? Uh, the deranged, Rovers, deranged Rovers. You know, I mean, it's it's, bro. It's one of the it's one of the most unique races in the world, bro. That <laughs> yeah, thing is, like, that is one of that should be one of those marketing Kenya like campaigns yeah. because mm -hmm. what it's the most I think most extreme off road challenge in the world or one of one of the most really? extreme. Yeah, bro. It's so unique. Oh it's, yeah, I've yeah. seen the videos when you guys are out on the tracks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you guys are still alive, man. <laughs> <laughs> when climbing all those rocks, like there's times I'm like, how is that car gonna go up? And it, yeah. it does don't go up. Does. No, it's Jesus, probably. That's what keeps us alive. I swear. Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> 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 Just go straight. Because that's the whole thing about Rhino Charge, right? Yeah. It's, it's this... What is the concept, actually, for someone who doesn't that, understand that, Rhino Charge? Yeah. And it's also one of the most unique concepts in terms of race, races around the world. Usually, races 95% of the time is. Fastest time, right? Mm. Fastest time. If you've got 14 checkpoints like a rhino charge right. randomly spread out through the bush, it's like how fast you get to those 14 checkpoints. Mm -hmm. uh, with rhino charge, it's a person, the team that wins, and there's 70 cars, 70 teams, most of them from Kenya, East Africa, some international teams as well. Mm -hmm. The team that wins is who gets to those 14 checkpoints in the shortest distance. Oh, Not the time. Not the time. Okay, so and the, the shortest planning, distance uh -huh. between a point A and B is a straight line. That's yeah. why the cars that you see that are built particularly for this yeah. purpose are built okay. so that you can go straight no matter what's in front of you. Trees, trees, cliffs, rivers, rocks. rocks. These cars are just and insane. Someone, he yeah. has some videos on his Instagram. You should check. That, it's wild, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. It's, it's a lot of fun, hey? It's, it's like crazy. taking a car for a how hike. How long does it take? 10 Please. hours. 10 hours. 10 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Once a year, that one race day. Different different location every year. You only find out the location two weeks prior, so you can prep. Oh, wow. do, do you guys come across so snakes and stuff? Like, oh. I think snakes come across us actually. <laughs> <laughs> do snake we cover? No, there's just you know the, 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 nature is built in a you know it's got a system. We've been around for a while. It works. They're scared of you more than you're scared of them. Yeah, so by absolutely. the time you're there, bro, they're gone. They're, they've gone. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, all the noise. I, mean, I, I did run across some shagging hyenas at one point, but that was that oh, was. Wow. You recorded the video? Uh, yeah. No, I was scared for my life. Frankly, I wasn't recording. Did. Yeah. Why? Why? Your friend. Why? <laughs> Your <brother's>, uh, <laughs> Literally, Team Mafisi. <laughs> <laughs> team Mafisi. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, so it's a, it's a really fun race. Eh? It's amazing. It has a bit of a PR issue that needs to kind of sort itself out. It yeah. seems very elitist and, you yeah. know, old uh, old Muzungus and classes Indians and in classes and stuff. Like yeah. mo most motorsport. You know, motorsport is an expensive sport. Yeah. Yeah. From your Formula One to your rallies to your... Yeah. Those are, you know... They're very expensive, seeming, actually. They're very expensive. Yeah. But, you know, 
they are aware of this. They're looking for younger teams and, you know, um, they're looking for people to participate because it is an incredible race. I mean, honestly, you, you could, it's at the par with WRC and could be in the next five years if they play their cards right and use modern technology because it's very difficult to watch. Yeah. You know, you just see a car emerge out of the bush and you're like, hey, and then it goes into a bush and you're like, you have to did not get my money's worth yet. <laughs> so like having those dash cams yeah. and having like, you know, geo-locked like uh, Yeah, so you can uh, drones, see the entire process. They just follow the yeah, car, you know, you like five, you know, then you see the whole entire mm-hmm. drama. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun, hey? It's, it's so now w- once the race is done, then you're, you're back to Nairobi, you, the car is serviced. Just sits there till the following race. Yeah, you go take it out, you practice, you need to fix it, oh, right? Yeah. Every year we completely break the car. We break, oh, really? we break shafts. We break, when, once we broke the car in half, we held it with two winches in the front and back, tightening them so we can cross the, get to the final checkpoint because you damage these cars. Your wheels pop yeah. off, your axles break, your, uh, you know, it's just one of these things that happen, if they would happen to your car here in the city, you just call tow, yeah. towers, bro, and you'd be like, Sawa, I might yeah. see you again or not. Yeah. Right off. Yeah. Like you do six or seven of these things to that car within those 10 hours because you push it to the extreme. So for the next year, you're saving money so that you can fix the thing and put <laughs> it back together in time for the next yeah. year's race. You should definitely rock up in a random place with that car. Yeah. <laughs> like in <imagine>. traffic. <laughs> so, is this even road legal? Uh, some of them are, yeah. Okay. Some of them are, yeah. Oh, some, some Our are. car is built particularly for like slow speed. So you, we, we always have to track it to whichever location we're going because uh, you can't, you can't really down. drive more than like 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers an hour. It's about like short speed torque and just being able to crawl up a rock face at mm. two kilometers an hour, two miles an hour, so everybody sees you. Mm. Um, but not for speed, right? Mm. It's not, okay. So taking on the highway would be... Would not be too good. Yeah. What, are, what are you working on that is uh, ex- exciting you now at the moment currently? Any Anything that... You're yeah. To Starting to have a look at like building the infrastructure because individually Kenya, mm-hmm. TZ, UG is not really standing out. If, for example, if you look at somebody like uh, Neo who we've, mm-hmm. been, who we've been talking to about touring over here or Berna and stuff like this. When you just look at the equation of just doing one show in Nairobi for them, Commercially, it Commercially doesn't make, doesn't sense, make yeah. sense, right? Yeah. So what we're trying to really build is that infrastructure of being the touring agency, being your plug for you know the whole of East Africa. So having our offices in Kigali, having our offices or partners in uh, Kampala, same in Dar, same in uh, Juba, just start building you know um, the infrastructure so that we can offer um, a full East Africa experience to international artists, to local artists, so they finally can play all around, you know, and, and so that's probably the most exciting thing. Oktoberfest EA edition is a part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and having our own network of, of, of teams on those grounds as well is, is, is key. So preparing East Africa is what I'm really excited about. Yeah. Uh, Oktoberfest EA edition, really excited about that. Mm-hmm. That should be really fun. Got into fashion. You know, I think there's a huge opportunity. It's probably one of the most underserved from film is there, struggling, but it's there. You know, music is there, it's struggling, but it's there. Uh, sports, it's there, it's struggling, but fashion particularly, like we're just not playing a role on the international market mm-hmm. almost at all. Mm-hmm. And we should. And, you know, you've got some of these fashion events over here, um, but to really take it up a notch and as well, stop focusing necessarily on like this very high fashion, which mm. people trying to like put a little kitenge into this. And, you yeah. know, maybe that's not our swag, you know? Sure. Like over here, what you see right now, what's blowing up is street fashion. You yeah. know, you, 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 you're a poster child for this shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, Studio 18 are driving that yes. really well. Yeah, big time. So yeah. it's thrifting, mm. it's reuse, recycle. We are sustainable mm. by our nature yeah. because of Gikomba. Mm. A lot of people trying to like toy, Gikomba and all this stuff, trying to get rid of it, it serves a purpose. That's it why it's around been, for 80% yeah. of the case. You, you see 80% of the people out here on these streets going to Westgate to buy their clothes. No, nope. Not, not going to happen. Not so it plays a role. Yes, it's killed the domestic cotton industry and production and stuff, but I think it's street fashion right now where all these fashion houses that you just even mentioned, it's about like thrifting, sourcing, mm. mixing and matching, reusing. Mm. I, I think that's quite unique about the Nairobi. Uh, yeah. uh, actually, as opposed to fighting embrace what's 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 unique about it mm. uh, and put it to the world because I think street fashion is killer right now. No, I love street fashion. So, man. yeah, I'm trying to do something in fashion early next year so that we can, uh, yeah. 
I have a favor to ask. <laughs> <laughs> we have gotten to this point. <laughs> talk to me. All this was small talk. Favor. Oh, small talk. <laughs> little this here, little the... there. <laughs> what is it? What you, what you want? <laughs> I need a lot of drugs in December. Okay, no, I'm messing. So, <laughs> are you messing though? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, Panadol's here and there for the hangovers, food work, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, so, and this and this is up to them really if they want to. Mm. But do you think Omanalo will be down to do this show? A hundred percent, bro. He's and he's such a uh, he's just a stellar dude, bro. You'll have fun as well. Yeah. He's a solid guy. I mean, like yeah. to get into his mind, yeah. the ah, guys yeah. who shave off like 0.05 seconds, they're like that's their focus to shave off something that you can't even like capture. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's not even a frame. You know, like to shave that off to get to the next level. Yeah. Ah, the determination, the focus, the mm. resilience, the mind. Yeah, he's a, he's a solid guy, of course. I'm, I'm Do sure you mind you'd love asking to. him? 100%, bro. Good stuff. Lastly. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jeff Kwenang, man. Jeff. Do you mind asking? Just ask if he says no, it's fine. Ah, bro. He'll be here smoking. <laughs> smoking. We'll have to Always ready. Yeah. We'll have a fire Always ready. Sure. Yeah. On the couch. I, 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 my car has a yeah. huge fire extinguisher. Yeah. I'll have to bring it. I don't know why they just put a huge if, if fire extinguisher. If you can't get him, you'll just have to do the voice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, drop so, yeah, it on. we'll only if, drop on Spotify. If Mara, can, <laughs> if Mara can get Jeff, we'll have you here as Jeff. Yeah. And you have to be in character the whole episode. And we'll ask you Jeff questions. <laughs> I, I have to say, though, I feel sorry. We didn't get your Batman vibes on here. At least we're hoping, like, what do you want back? <laughs> I think she figured out what is, her voice yeah, is she not just, coming out. Today she's like, just here to yeah. watch and listen. Do you have a good time? <laughs> so, yeah. Moral of the story, stay away from BBC's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you like, man, it's fine, man. Regular. Thank you so much for making time, man. Yeah, this man, was this, was, this yeah. was good. This was fun. This was a nice man. Sunday chat. Yes. Yeah. It was good fun. Appreciate you. Like yeah, thank Be in you. touch, for sure. 100%. Thanks for Marek, having me. Marek, episode 94. We are Mark Chuck. Hey. Hey. Over 26. <laughs> this is the Fraga Podcast. This is the Brunch Club. Over 26. Welcome back to the Fraga Podcast. The mics are closed. Now, when you watch it, you'll understand. <laughs>